Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another Tabligh Talks online lecture series on how to preach Islam and uh, with Nazim Ahmed Bajwa Sahib, uh, missionary of the Baptist Mosque. And in this series, we will um, be discussing, sorry, in this particular um, part, which is going to be discussing how to preach Islam and to atheists, um, I will now pass it over to Nazim Bajwa Sahib to for those who want to ask questions at the end, they can leave it either in the chat or they can raise their hands and towards the end we will, and Baja Sahib will answer those questions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As it is mentioned that uh, today the subject is how to convey the message of Islam Ahmadiyya to the atheists. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is a very important subject because majority of the people in the world today, they are uh, practically, they are atheists. In fact, sometimes people say that uh, those people who claim that they believe in religion, in fact, they are also atheists. The reason is that if they truly believe in the religion, and which they claim, then why don't they practice it? So they say that in fact they don't have the uh, full conviction about the existence of God Almighty. <clears throat> so this is why we need to address this subject uh, properly. Now the thing is that uh, Allah Himself uh, provide all the necessary things which are uh, which can lead people to the to God Almighty. And for this purpose, he himself sends the prophets. Whenever people become weak in their faith uh, in God Almighty, God Almighty always sent the prophet. This is why the Holy Prophet وسلم, said that Allah sent uh, messengers, uh, about uh, 124,000 prophets before the Holy Prophet وسلم, And then, of course, after the Holy Prophet وسلم, now we have Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Afghadiyan, the <coughs> founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, who has come according to the prophecies of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu because he said that in the latter days, when faith will become very weak, at that time God Almighty will uh, send the promised Messiah, who will also be Imam Mahdi. <coughs> now, as far as the arguments with regard to the subject are concerned, there are three kinds of arguments. One are philosophical arguments, then, then there are some scientific uh, arguments, and then there are religious arguments. As far as the philosophical arguments are concerned, <clears throat> Hazrat Masih Maudri Islam has discussed all these things in his book, um, particularly in Brahini Ahmadiyya, the first uh, uh, four volumes. He said that uh, generally people say that because uh, <clears throat> whenever we see anything, we, uh, we I mean, our uh, reason and logic <clears throat> force us to believe that there must be a maker of, for that. And this is why when we see this whole universe and we automatically uh, are inclined to believe that there should be a, a maker of this universe. But as Masih Mosam says that uh, that is the maximum is that you will believe that there should be one maker. <clears throat> there is a very big difference in two things. One, that there should be a maker and the other thing uh, that there is a maker or a creator. So this is why you can see that uh, most of the philosophers, uh, they were not, uh, despite the fact they made a lot of researches, but at the end of the day, they became atheists. But, so if uh, philosophical arguments were sufficient to uh, convince people, then all the philosophers should have been the greatest believer of God, but it is not. So that means, that the philosoph philosophical arguments in itself they are not uh, you know uh, sufficient 
they can be supporting evidence but uh, they cannot uh, we cannot rely upon them you can't depend upon them then <clears throat> as far as the scientific evidences are concerned again science deals with matter unless something is material science can't deal with that now god is not material so this is why god is outside the domain of science so again we need some other arguments and then science scientific arguments can support it then that's that's fine so all the arguments of philosophy and science they have the supportive position we can't uh, uh, depend on those uh, arguments <clears throat> this way as masiva sam says that you will never see that the uh, any of the prophet of god was a scientist <clears throat> uh, because if science was enough to convince people about uh, god then god should have uh, you know select some scientist who should become a prophet and he should uh, invite people to the uh, to god almighty but it is not so then the next thing is that the only option for us is to take the religious argument and among these religious arguments the most important one, one as as mr was some himself has described which is the prophecies of the prophets are the are such uh, uh, provide such argument that nobody can <clears throat> deny that why because the when the prophets of allah they say that god speaks to us and then say the proof of that is that this is what god has told me about future and uh, there is no way to find out uh, about this that way this is going to happen or not happen so i am telling you that this is going to happen so when those prophecies are fulfilled exactly as they are told then definitely one has to believe that that man uh, is true and god is also there who is speaking to them who told him something about the future which nobody else was able to find out <clears throat> now about this uh, argument as muslim was rasul tusam says in his book tariqul uh, qulub uh, he says and that is ruhani khazain uh, volume 15 page 143 and the name of the book is tariqul qulub in that as muslim was some says خدا کی ہستی کے ماننے کے لیے اس سے زیادہ صاف اور قریب الفہم اور اور کوئی راہ نہیں کہ وہ غیب کی باتیں اور پوشیدہ واقعات اور آئندہ زمانے کی خبریں اپنے خاص طور کو بتلاتا ہے اور وہ نہاں در نہاں اسرار جن کا دریافت کرنا انسانی طاقتوں سے بالا تر ہے اپنے مقربوں پر ظاہر کر دیتا ہے میدانی سے سو خدا نے میرے پر یہ احسان کیا ہے جو اس نے تمام دنیا میں سے مجھے اس بات کے لیے منتخب کیا ہے تاکہ تا وہ اپنے نشانوں سے گمراہ لوگوں کو راہ پر لاوے دی انگلش ٹرانسلیشن اف دس کوٹیشن از دیٹ دا پون سائب پیس پی پون سیز देयर इज नो क्लियरर एंड इजीयर वे टू बिलीव इन द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ गॉड देन थ्रू द अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट ही रिवील्स टू हिज क्लोज सर्वेंट्स मैटर्स ऑफ द अनसीन एंड प्रोफेसीज रिगार्डिंग फ्यूचर इवेंट्स ही डिस्क्लोजेस टू दोस हु आर क्लोज टू हिम द डीप हिडन सीक्रेट्स because there is no way for man to be enlightened about such secrets of the future as are beyond the reach of human faculties it is indeed true that knowledge of unseen events and hidden matters especially those which are related to the exercise of divine power and will are matters that man can never attain through his own efforts therefore god has bestowed his beneficence upon me the promise has said that therefore god has bestowed his beneficence upon me and has chosen me out of the whole world so that through the manifestation of his signs he may bring back to the right path those who have gone astray <clears throat> now <clears throat> the benefit of Uh, these prophecies are in fact uh, fundamentally there are two benefits one is 
that uh, we can find out the truthfulness of that prophet who claims that he is from God. The second benefit is that we will also have the uh, evidence about the existence of God Almighty. So this is the reason why we should pay uh, full attention to the subject of the prophecies. And in fact, the word prophet means a person who claims that he received the prophecies from God Almighty and they, those prophecies are fulfilled. And when they are fulfilled, then you can say he is a prophet. But another thing is <clears throat> that uh, uh, there are many people who can have some prophecies uh, from God Almighty, but they are not called prophets. Why? Because for uh, the claim of prophethood, uh, a person should have uh, so many uh, prophecies from God Almighty and so much knowledge of the unseen that ultimately God himself should say to him that I have appointed you a prophet. So unless Allah Ta'ala tells him, he never claims. <clears throat> but it doesn't mean that only the prophets are the people who receive revelation from God uh, about future. Some other people can also have it. <clears throat> but anyhow now, <clears throat> what, the, what does the Holy Quran say about the knowledge of the unseen? <clears throat> the Holy Quran says in chapter 72, verse 27 and 28, and the translation is, he, that means Allah, is the knower of the unseen, and he reveals not his secrets to anyone except to him whom he chooses, namely a messenger of his. And then he causes an escort of guarding angels to go before him and behind him. So here Allah Ta'ala says that uh, Allah is the door of the unseen, Alimul Ghabi. And then he says the proof of that is that Allah Ta'ala reveals his secrets to his messengers whom he appoints. And then Allah Ta'ala makes sure that those uh, prophecies which are which are contained in the in that uh, knowledge of the unseen which is given to the prophet by allah the almighty that is fulfilled allah Ta'ala himself makes it sure <clears throat> now as far as these prophecies are concerned we see that ho number one holy quran is full of such prophecies and for example i'll give you a few examples uh, there is one surah which is called surah at takwir Chapter 81 of the Holy Quran and verses 2 to 14. Allah the Almighty says, Is a shamsu kubirat wa izan nujumun kadarat wa izal jibaru sujirat wa izal ashar utilat and then koan. The translation is, When the sun is wrapped up and when the stars are obscured and when the mountains are made to move and when the she camels 10 months pregnant are abandoned. And when the beasts are gathered together, and when the seas are made to flow forth one into the other, and when people are brought together, and when the girl child buried alive is questioned about <clears throat> for what crime she was she killed, and when books are spread abroad, and when the heaven is laid bare, and when the fire is caused to blaze up, and when the garden is brought nigh. <clears throat> now you see, these are the prophecies about the about future. <clears throat> In the hadith, there is a hadith of the early Prophet <clears throat> which says that uh, this prophecy about uh, the that the she camel would be abandoned, that is related to the time of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him. This mentioned the book of hadith called Muslim. In the Muslim Sharif, it is mentioned. <clears throat> that the she camel or the camels will be abandoned uh, when the time of the promise comes and there will be new modes of transportation. And uh, here you see the word is when the she camel 10 month pregnant are abandoned. So now that means that Holy Prophet himself has told us that these prophecies are related to the time of the promised Messiah. <clears throat> now we see that in this age, when the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, has called, come, <clears throat> Allah Ta'ala has al already uh, shown these signs. 
<clears throat> we have new modes of transportation. People are not using camels now for uh, traveling as you, they used to do in uh, Arabia, particularly at that time. That was the only, you know, means of transportation. <clears throat> but then now we have cars, we have buses, we have uh, coaches, we have aeroplanes and so many things, <clears throat> railway. So all this proves that the prophecy of the Holy Quran is, pro uh, is fulfilled. The question is that if Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not told by God Almighty that this is going to happen, who told him? What other resources he had to make this kind of prophecies? And then even if he had, for example, somebody can just imagined it, but how he could have fulfilled it? Who made all those provisions that these prophecies should be fulfilled? And then you see how you can see that this is exactly the time that at one side the promise is there and the other hand this, uh, these prophecies are uh, fulfilled. And in fact, uh, these, the fulfillment of these prophecies also prove that this is the time of the promised Messiah and there must be a, prophet, a promised Messiah as well. <clears throat> because this is what the Holy Prophet Sallallahu <clears throat> told. So those but Muslims also, I would like to uh, divert the attention, draw the attention of the Muslims that don't you see that these prophecies are fulfilled? And the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said that uh, these prophecies are related to the time of the promised Messiah. So then how is it possible that the promised Messiah will not come in this age? This is why, this is the age of the promised Messiah. But anyhow, going back to the subject of atheism, uh, we ask the atheist, please you tell us, who told Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi 1400 years ago that a time is going to come when camels will not be used for <coughs> traveling and there'll be some new modes of transportation. Unless there is a being who has the knowledge of the unseen, who has the knowledge of the future, and he told him there is no other, <clears throat> uh, you know, answer to this question. And this is what, what proves the uh, existence of God Almighty. Then, for example, it is said here, when the beasts are gathered together. Now, is it not true that in the time of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, there was no zoo anywhere in the world? But here this prophecy is saying that there will be a time when the animals will be put together somewhere and people will, uh, you know, see them. So in th this is the age when zoos are made all over the world and people go there and visit them and the animals are, or beasts are put together at one place. Then <clears throat> it says, and when the seas are made to flow forth one into the other. Now, to, at the time of Holy Prophet, could anybody imagine that the, the two seas can be joined? Impossible. But then you see, slowly, slowly, the <clears throat> uh, science advances, and ultimately, a man is able to uh, do this great wonder. And we have, especially, uh, one Panama uh, Canal and Swiss Canal. So both of them, these uh, canals have joined the oceans. <clears throat> so is it not the proof that what Muhammad was told 1400 years ago in the desert of Arabia, <clears throat> and he claimed at that time something which was beyond his understanding and beyond of the understanding of any human being. And whatever he said that is fulfilled in this age. <clears throat> then, it is said that when the girl's child buried alive is questioned about for what crime was she killed? That means that uh, that will be time time when uh, women have, will have the, so much right that nobody will be <clears throat> do any harm to them. And now you can see that how many organizations are there in the world to protect the rights of, him, uh, of women. So this was exactly mentioned by the Holy Quran. Because at the time when this, these verses were revealed to the Holy Prophet, <clears throat> uh, some people used to bury their uh, female uh, children at the time of their birth. They didn't like that they should be uh, called that their father of the girls. <clears throat> this was the time when the Holy Prophet is making this prophecy, and now you can see how it is being fulfilled. Then it said, it said that when books are spread abroad, 
Now, at the time of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu was it possible to conceive this? That there will be a time the books will be written so many and then they will be spread all around in the world. So, this is the age when <clears throat> the press is invent invented and you can <clears throat> uh, print, you know, millions of books in a very short time. <clears throat> <clears throat> so now again, this prophecy is fulfilled in this uh, age, and that proves that God Almighty <clears throat> is there, who has the knowledge of the unseen, who revealed these things to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as so many years ago. <clears throat> <clears throat> then uh, another thing is, it is said that uh, when the garden is uh, brought nigh, and that means the paradise will be brought, uh, brought closer. What it means is that uh, the, when the promised Messiah comes, he will introduce a system and he will say that if you join this system, you will go to paradise, you will enter paradise. And, and this is what the Holy Prophet ﷺ explained in the, in the book of Muslim. He said that the, when the promised Messiah will come, he will tell his followers their grades in paradise. So that hadith of the Holy Prophet has explained the, this verse of the Holy Quran. That means that Allah Ta'ala told <coughs> so many details to Holy Prophet Some are mentioned the Holy Quran and some are mentioned the hadith. <coughs> so now we, we see that Prophet comes uh, and he claims um, in 1889 and then in 1905, for three years before his uh, demise, he wrote the book, The Will, and he said to, uh, told the people that Allah has told me <clears throat> that uh, I'm going to start a, uh, an institution of uh, the will or wasiyat, and those people who will <clears throat> contribute 10% minimum of their income and their property for the propagation of uh, peace, that is Islam, and also for helping the poor and needy people in the world who are <clears throat> so many in the world. And he said, those people who will do this, Allah has promised to me that they will uh, be admitted to paradise. And now by the grace of Allah, you can see that despite the fact that, that uh, <clears throat> all the people love money and they try to acquire money even through unlawful means, here there is, there is a community of uh, believers, Ahmadiyya Muslim community, who is <clears throat> dedicating so much uh, money in the way of Allah the Almighty that they are fulfilling this prophecy of the Holy Quran and of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The prophecy which was made 14 years ago, again that is the proof of the existence of God Almighty. Otherwise, how anybody can do it? <clears throat> if anybody can do on his own, he can try. <clears throat> And in fact, first thing is to have the prophecy and then when it is fulfilled, then we can say that it's a sign. Otherwise, other th if th th things are happening uh, by itself, then it, it is not a sign. <clears throat> now, after the Holy Quran, now I'll take a few prophecies of the uh, Hadith, because there are many <clears throat> sayings of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu also about the future. In this regard, again, I will refer to that prophecy which is uh, uh, very <clears throat> uh, famous in the Ahmadiyya Muslim community that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said, and that is uh, written in the book of Sunandar Kutni, uh, a book of Hadith, you know, written many hundred years ago. <clears throat> and it is stated that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, <clears throat> one of the revivers of faith in my community will be called Imam Mahdi. And in his time, two great heavenly signs will be will appear. One is the eclipse of the moon, and the other is eclipse of the sun. And the dates are also mentioned. <clears throat> that um, after conclusion, we come to the conclusion that the moon will be eclipsed on thirteenth, uh, and the sun will be eclipsed on twenty eighth in the same month of Ramadan. You just imagine how many details are there. The month is told. First, you know that the claimant is there, should be there. Then the month is mentioned that is the month of Ramadan. And then the eclipse of the 
the date of the eclipse of uh, moon is men mentioned 13th and then the date of eclipse of the sun is mentioned that is 28th <clears throat> and he has said it will never ever happen that a true messiah comes and then these signs are also there <clears throat> now we see that although these eclipses do take place it's not a, something which is uh, you know unusual it is the eclipses do take place in the month of ramadan they do they do, do, do take place in on these dates as well they can be in one uh, in the month of ramadan together as well all these things are possible but the question is first of all there should be a, a claimant of imam imam Ali. so holy prophet says that this phenomena will take phenomena will take place only once that there is a man who says that I have come as Imam Mahdi according to the prophecy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then you see these eclipses take place and you see that has Mr. Ghulam Ahmad Qadiyan Islam <coughs> claimed to be from Imam Mahdi in 1890 and in 1894 four years later in the month of Ramadan the moon and the sun are eclipsed under those dates, dates which were mentioned by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam neither before nor after these things have this thing has never happened again i say i'm not saying that uh, these uh, eclipses have not taken place what i'm saying that this is that never happened that somebody is claim, claiming to be imam mahdi and then uh, after that these signs are happened this is what is it uh, what, what makes it a sign <clears throat> so when he that man comes these signs appear and you can see that uh, uh, millions of people have accepted that from Messiah and the community which is established, they are serving mankind in such a way that all the people in the world, they admire this community, that this is a, a community which is serving all mankind uh, and they, their motto, love for all, hated for none, is such motto that they are really uh, following that motto as well, not only just claiming. <clears throat> and that is, because they have believed in that Imam Mahdi al-Islam and they are most peaceful people which is uh, uh, you know, admitted by the oh, oh, whole world. <clears throat> now, the thing is that uh, who told the Holy Prophet That is the question. That <clears throat> a time will come that um, from among his followers somebody will claim to be imam mahdi and then after his claim the moon and sun will be eclipsed during the month of ramadan who who told Hazrat muhammad Mustafa Aslam, if there is no god if there's any doubt about it somebody should think about it in fact you see i have spoken to uh, many atheists and i presented this Hadith of the Holy Prophet. And I, I asked them, you please tell me how is it possible for a man living in desert 1400 years ago and he's still telling something which is going to happen after 1400 years? Who told him and how who fulfilled these all these, these conditions? <clears throat> if there is no God, then how this thing can uh, uh, can be <clears throat> claimed by anyone? So this is a very wonderful proof, very powerful proof of the existence of God. And at the same time, it will prove the truthfulness of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he made the prophecy. And at the same time, it will prove the truthfulness of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani, the founder of the MDA community. <coughs> so with this just one hadith, you will be able to <coughs> prove the existence of God. So in other words, you can speak to the atheists. At the same time, <clears throat> Those who do not believe in other Muhammad Mustafa I mean the Jews, Christians, and others, because they do believe in uh, in God, but they don't believe in Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you can also speak to them about uh, on the basis of this hadith, and then you can also speak to the non ahmadi Muslims and present it before them and say that uh, <clears throat> how can you say say that has Mizaburam Muhammad and Islam is not true? So with this. Just with one this hadith, you can convey the message of Islam Ahmadiyyad to the atheist, to the <coughs> uh, Christians, Christian, Jews, Hindu, whatever religion anybody has, and also to the non-Ahmadi Muslims. So this, way, this is why 
we should uh, especially uh, remember this hadith and all the detail and also the objection which people raise against it, we should uh, be able to answer that as well. <clears throat> and by the case of Allah in the internet, there are many articles about it. Any questions you raise, that, that those questions are answered. <clears throat> Uh, there was one uh, Ahmadi scientist, uh, um, Aladdin Sahib, um, from India, and uh, he <coughs> uh, was uh, because he was a scientist, astronomist, and he has uh, written a very detailed uh, article on this subject. So you can find it if you write uh, that in the Google the. Uh, sign of the eclipses of the moon and the sun uh, uh, written by uh, Mr. Aladdin. I don't remember his first name, but uh, this is the surname is Aladdin. Saleh. Saleh uh, Aladdin Sahib. <coughs> now, <coughs> the another prophecy of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is <coughs> that uh, you see. When he appeared in Holy Prophet appeared in the world in 570, he was born, and uh, in 610, he claimed to be a prophet, and he passed away in 632. Now, at that time, all around him there were Jews, Christian, uh, the other leaders, and the Christians believed about Jesus Christ that he <coughs> has ascended to heaven. And uh, as far as the Jews were concerned, they were say saying that uh, he died on the cross and he was accursed. At that time, Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam announces, and this is written in the book of Kanzul Ummal, which is a book of Hadith. So for the last 1400 years, this Hadith is coming. And that says, that Holy Prophet says that, Inna Jibreel Akhbarani, that the Gabriel has told me that Jesus son of Mary lived 120 years. Jesus lived 120 years while all Christians and Jews, they believe that Jesus was put on the cross at the uh, age of uh, 33. And uh, Jews believe that he uh, died and finished, buried or whatever happened. And as far as the Christians are concerned, they say, yes, uh, he died on the cross, but then <coughs> he was resurrected and then he went to heaven. This was the belief of all the people. And what he is saying, as Muhammad Sallam, that no, all these people are wrong. Allah has told me he didn't die on the cross. And uh, he lived after the crucifixion and he died at the age of 120. Now, <clears throat> up to this age, nobody was able to know what happened. But uh, to prove the truthfulness of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Allah sent this Imam Mahdi al-Islam. And he has proved that yes, has, uh, that has Isa al-Islam, Jesus Christ, which we have him, truly lived uh, for 120 years and he migrated after the crucifixion. You know, he survived from the crucifixion and then he migrated and ultimately went to India and his tomb is there in Kashmir. All this detail, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadi and Islam has written in his book, uh, Jesus in India, Masi Hindustan. And the arguments are so powerful, so powerful that the, even the Christian world, the non-Muslim world have accepted it. For example, there is a writer called Dr. Fiber Kaiser of Spain. He has written a book called Jesus Died in Kashmir. And all these books are written after his, the book of the Prophet Sahib is not before. Then there is another book called Jesus Lived in India, written by Mr. Harger Kusten. He's from Germany. Now he also admitted and he has accepted that yes, it is true. So all these people made independent uh, research and then they uh, confirmed that what has been Ulam the Kadiani wrote that is right. <clears throat> and nowadays there is a, a documentary also available on uh, uh, internet uh, about the tomb of Jesus Christ, uh, tomb of Jesus in Kashmir. And this document is provided by uh, Indian government. And there are Muslim uh, research scholars, there are 
Christian scriptures, scholars, atheists, scholars who have admitted that whatever has Mirza Ghulam Qazini has written, that is right. And what has Mirza Ghulam Qazini has written? That was told by Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago when all around him people were saying that Jesus did not live on this earth more than 33 years. The question is, who told Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And, and the other thing also, that in this age again, all the Christians and Jews had the same belief. And one man, as Mr. Ghulam Qadiani, rises and he says, Allah has told me that yes, Jesus uh, did not die on the cross and then he <coughs> uh, uh, migrated from Jerusalem and he died in uh, Kashmir. If it was so easy to find out, why are the pe previous people were not able to find this? There are so many, so much big researchers and scholars, Muslim, Christian, atheist, all type of people. Why they didn't, they, they were not able to, uh, you know, discover it. So that means it was revealed to Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Qadi and Islam and then God Almighty guided him to all those evidences which were uh, necessary to prove this fact. <clears throat> so this is another proof that God exists and he has the knowledge of the unseen. Now I come to the prophecies of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Qadi and Islam. There are many prophecies. One should read the book uh, uh, Invitation to Ahmadiyyat. There are 12 prophecies mentioned with full detail. Uh, in Urdu it's called Dawat al -Amir. In English it's called Invitation to Ahmadiyyat, written by Hazrat Mirza Bishuddin Muhammad Ahmad Sahib. And then uh, 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 as Cliff Thomasi Rabi also wrote in the book uh, in Revelation, Rationality, Knowledge and Truth. One can read there as well. Then Tuskara, uh, the prof books of prophecies of the promise of peace be upon, that's also there. But anyhow, I'll mention only such a hadith today, which I have seen being fulfilled in front of my own eyes. First of among them is the uh, election of the Khalifa in Ahmadiyya community. You see, <clears throat> Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa told 1400 years ago that in the latter days, once again, the upright Khalaf will be uh, re-established. And he said that that will remain uh, forever. Now, and now Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Qadi and Islam comes in the world. He claims to be the Prophet Messiah Imam Adi. And before he dies, he wrote a book, The Will. And in that book, he said that uh, Allah has told me that after me, there will be system of Khilafat and it will remain uh, forever. The words, just see, he says that uh, <clears throat> تمہارے لئے دوسری قدرت کا بھی دیکھنا ضروری ہے اور اس کا آنا تمہارے لئے بہتر ہے کیونکہ وہ دائمی ہے جس کا سسلہ قیامت تک منقطع نہیں ہوگا So he says that Dear friend, it has always been the way of God Almighty to show two manifestations of his power he thereby demolishes two false joys of the opponents. It is impossible that he should now change this long established divine practice. Grieve not therefore at what I am telling you, nor shall you be uh, heartbroken that you know when he told about his own demise. As you are destined to witness the second manifestation of his power, and that is the system of Khilafat. And then he says, and this second manifestation will be better for you as it is everlasting and will remain unbroken until the day of judgment. And the second manifestation cannot occur until after I am gone. But once I have departed, God will bring about for you the second manifestation of his power and it will remain with you forever. You see how many times he's saying it will be forever, forever. Now the question is, as Mr. Sahib passes away in 1908, now people could have scattered after him. It was not necessary that they will have a, a Khalifa. Okay, even if, for example, once they have it, then again, at the second time also something something could have happened. What, where, what power is that which is uh, keeping the system of Khalifa 
continuously uh, from 1908 when the promise have passed away up to uh, this day who is controlling all this thing that this ahmadiyya jamaat should uh, keep this system of khilafat with them whereas we know that after the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the system of khilafat remained only for 30 years and then it was converted into uh, a kingdom system but in the ahmadiyya jamaat it has not happened although this is a prophecy of holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he said that when the system of khilafat will be reestablished in the latter days and this is in the book of musnam bin hanbal he said that that will remain forever summa sakat an nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam these are the words there so as it is the gulam ad qadiani islam whatever he has said that is in fact it is the continuation of the same prophecy of azma muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he has come to fulfill the prophecies of azma muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam so now i have seen myself the uh, in election of the first as uh, fourth the third khalifa was mr nasir himself which took place in 1965 i was in rabba at that time although i was young but then you i still remember very clearly um i was 17 year old at that time that in 1982 the uh, fourth khalifa was mr tahir himself was, uh, was uh, elected at that time i was here in london and i remember all this what happened and then in 2003 when president huzur was elected here in fazl mosque by the grace of allah by the grace of allah i was also member of that uh, uh, election committee so i saw all this the how latara uh, controlled everything that the person who was the most the youngest among all those people whose name was presented who was not known to the people how allah taala diverted the attention of all the people towards him and a very big majority is uh, you know supported this name and uh, he was elected so this is the sign of allah which i saw myself with my own eyes and uh, this system continuation of the system up to date this proves that whatever has muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam said 1400 years ago that was also from god and what from the sahab peace be upon him told in his book the will that is also from god and that is the proof of the existence of god because if there is no god who told them these all these details and who has uh, who is fulfilling these these words <clears throat> now the another thing which i myself saw that uh, there was a prophecy of the holy Prophet uh, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, uh, which he has uh, he mentioned uh, in one of his uh, book, that in 1868 or in 1869 he received this revelation from God that kings shall be seek blessing from thy garment. Baat shah tere ko puro se barkar dhoonek. Now, up to 1967, there was no person, no Ahmadi or who had become the king of any uh, place but in 1967 when i was uh, say uh, 19 year old <clears throat> uh, i heard all this from the third khalifa was nasir ahmed sahib in his uh, speech in the jalsa salana he said this year allah taala has fulfilled another prophecy of his musi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is that god said, told him Uh, in you know that is hundred years before at that time when he was saying this uh, that God as kings shall seek blessing from thy garment and he said that during this week at uh, this month this year uh, <clears throat> the one Ahmadi uh, is uh, selected as the to be the governor general first governor general of Gambia which is one of the African countries West African country. so he was the first governor general uh, his name was sir f m sanghate and you know the moment he became governor general he wrote to the to the khalifa al masih ayy allah taala he said that please send me some piece of the cross of the promise of peace be upon him so that i can fulfill the, those words literally and then later on these uh, some pieces of cross of the of the promise of peace be upon him were sent to him and this of civil fulfill literally 
in front of our own eyes. All those people who are present in that jail cell, they remember. All those people who are of my generation, they know all this. And then, of course, nowadays, uh, there are many uh, local kings uh, in Africa who have joined the MBA community and they're participating in the Jatsa Salaan. And here in the Jatsa Salaan also, they come. And uh, the other thing is that Hazrat Khalif Tamsil, Hami Sayyid Allah Ta'ala Bin Sajid now, he is invited by these uh, head of the states. Um, for example, in Capitol Hill, he was invited in, um, <clears throat> in British Parliament, in uh, European Parliament, so many places. And uh, in Canada, the Prime Minister also, uh, you know, invited him. So all these, these prof prophecies are fulfilling, uh, which, which were made by the Prime Minister, peace be upon him. Another prophecy, if I have some time, and that is, uh, again, how precisely this was fulfilled. Uh, Masih Maud Islam was told in uh, 1891, and he writes this in his book, Izzalai Oham, which was printed in 1891. He says that I saw a dream uh, in which uh, uh, I was told that uh, there, will, there will be an uh, enemy of uh, the Amdiya Jamaat who, who will remain alive up to the age of 51. But then after 51, he will not be able to complete the 52nd year. Now, just how precisely the prophecy is made. And he says that in this regard, Allah revealed to me, Kalbun Yamutwala Kalbin, that he is dog and he will die on, uh, on uh, 52 years. Or before he completes the 52 years, he will die because the word Kalb has the numerical value of 52. And he said that Allah has revealed to me and he has also told me the detail as well that I'm up to the age of 51, he will remain alive. And after that, he will not be able to complete the next year. So now, I, again, I have seen all this with my own eyes in 1979. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Bhutto, Zulfkar Bhutto, who in fact, uh, he and his party declared on this non-Muslim in 1974. And after that, you see, he was also involved in one murder case and ultimately it was decided by the General Zayal Haqqa, who was the president of Pakistan at that time, that Mr. Bhutto should be hanged. So I mean, the, the court decided about it. So at that time, you see, I was in Pakistan. I went from here, from you. And uh, I, it was so much you know, discussed by Ahmadis all around that even the non-Ahmadis, knew it that this is what I am these are saying and in fact in uh, one day uh, it was published in the newspaper it, it, the name and the it was said on the the paper uh, general uh, general Zawlaq ke naam khula khat, an open letter to general Zawlaq. and it was written that general Zawlaq Saab, if you have decided to uh, hang uh, bhutto please don't do it until he's 52 otherwise these MDs will not never leave us so that means that it was common knowledge in the whole of Pakistan. But now you can see that uh, was uh, Ziaullah able to change this fate? No. Despite the fact he himself was the enemy of the Amdiya Jama. But Allah Ta'ala fulfilled this prophecy with his, with his hand, with the hand of an enemy. That he, he was, uh, I mean, forced from himself that he must do it before uh, he's 52. So in fact, uh, he was hanged on 4th of April, uh, 1979, when he was only 51 year and uh, three months, because uh, his 51st birthday was celebrated uh, on 5th of January. So now the question is, who told Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiyani Islam in 1891 that there will be an enemy of the Amdiya community? and he will live up to the age of 51. He will be doing whatever he wants to do, but then he will not be able to complete 50 second years. Who told if there is no God and who fulfilled these, these words? So having all these details, in fact, we can have no uh, <clears throat> doubt about it 
that God is there. Then again, I take another very small, uh, very important uh, prophecy that uh, as Mr. Ulamit Kazi in Islam was told that uh, I will cause thy message to reach the corners of the world. Now living in Qadiyan, having no resources, he's saying this, that my message will reach each and uh, uh, every corner of the world. At that time, there was no means. But then Allah Ta'ala, you know, um, enabled people to invent uh, this uh, TV system. And Hamdiya Jamaat, uh, the Khalifa al Rabi was able to come uh, in UK because of migration. And then, by the grace of Allah, MTA started, Muslim Tali bin Ahmadiyya started in 1992. Uh, and now, through this Muslim Tali bin Ahmadiyya, each and every corner of the world is receiving the message of the Prophet Messiah, which is the message of true Islam, the peaceful Islam, the message of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa وسلم, the message of the Holy Quran. So, the question is, who told Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Qadiani al-Islam in 1892 that this will happen and now this is happening? So can we doubt about the existence of God after all these things? And I, these are just few examples. Otherwise, I have so many other uh, things which I can tell you. For example, in just recently, the most recent one, in, two, uh, in uh, uh, 2018, the great prophecy was again fulfilled. And that was that Prophet Sahaja wrote in his uh, book, Tazkrat uh, al-Shahadatan, which was published in 1903. There he says that it, a time is coming when there will be railway between Mecca and Medina. Now, this was not a small uh, 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 prophecy. Why? Because between Mecca and Medina, there is so much sand that uh, it is not easy to uh, uh, have this in infrastructure of uh, the railway. So the, even the uh, Saudi government having a lot of money, they tried their best to have it, but they were unable to have it until uh, in 2009, uh, they gave this project to some Spanish uh, uh, companies and about 14 companies, you know, uh, combined uh, and they worked on this for nine years. And in 2018, this high speed railway uh, has started working between Mecca and Medina. And that journey, which is about 300 mile, which uh, now it is, it can be covered in 120 minutes, that means two hours time. Which previous zero, in the time of the Holy Prophet people used to go on uh, just camels. And Holy Prophet said that uh, uh, a time is coming when camels will not be used. And now Prophet Messiah, peace be upon him, is telling that because I'm that Prophet Messiah, in my time, the, all these prophecies are going to be fulfilled. So then you see, he says, although when the promise I claimed, railway was there, but there was no railway in Mecca, between Mecca and Medina. So he said, now my prophecy is, which Allah has told me, that there will be railway. And now that prophecy is fulfilled. So this is the latest uh, one of the, you know, the latest, of course, there will be many other things which uh, people can uh, say, but uh, that's also very recent, that in 2018, this uh, prophecy of his Muslim of al -Islam, was fulfilled, which was made in 1903. That means 115 years before the fulfillment of the prophecy. So if there is no God who told all these things to Hazrat Mirza Kulam Afkadiya, So I think for the time being, it is enough. Uh, we, have, uh, we have to have some time for questions. There's one, so just to remind people, they can ask their questions through the chat or they can raise their hand and they can ask the question themselves. So there's one question that's come in, which says, how do we reply to those who say that they do not need to believe in a God in order to be a good humanitarian? You see, we don't say that you can't be, uh, be a, a good humanitarian without believing, believing in God. We don't say that. But the question is that uh, uh, individually people can be good. But we need a Can you hear me, please? 
Yes, we can hear you now. I think just, yeah, maybe you should restart again. Yeah, okay. Yes. So I'm saying that uh, individually people can be good. If, if, although they may not be good of that standard, but okay, let's say that they, they can be good to some extent. But uh, it com a work which a community can do, that cannot be done by uh, some individuals. This is why God Almighty <clears throat> draw good people together so that a community of believers can affect uh, the whole world and they can do uh, such great work which uh, the world needs. For example, I give you the example. Individual people give charity, that's fine. But when <clears throat> all people get together and decide something, they can bring about a great revolution. Here in UK, for example, you see people are paying, <clears throat> You know that as far as their taxes are concerned, the minimum tax is 20%, and then it goes up to 46%. In UK, in um, England, uh, there is 45%, and in Scotland, it goes up to 46%. Now, the average of 20 and 46 is 33%. That means one third of their income uh, people are giving. So, in other words, it's just like a Basiyat. The result is that by the grace of Allah, this uh, country is flourishing, they have uh, providing free uh, education, health uh, facilities uh, and social security and everything. But that's only in this country. Now Allah has sent the promise of peace be upon him so that the whole world should be provided with these facilities. But in this country, what they are doing, unless the people get together, they can't do this. If individually only just people pay charities to this and that, they will not be able to set a system. So the prophets of Allah come so that all the righteous people, good people get together and then they are able to uh, benefit the whole society. So this is the difference. Even today, for example, you know, there are many good people in the world, but can, can they help the African people? Nine million people die every year. You can see in the Google. Nine million every year, this number is increasing. Why is this? Because the people, are, uh, uh, all the good people of the world, they are, have not got together now. And this is why the promise has been sent. And by the grace of Allah, you can see that through MDA community, many African countries have got so much, uh, you know, uh, support and humanitarian help, which nobody else is providing. Um, there's another question which says that, um, that as uh, Muslims and as Muslims, as you know, the, to build a connection with God, you have to pray. Um, but what if, you know, people, you know, those who have left Islam have said that, you know, because their prayers are not being answered, therefore they do not believe in a God because their prayers are not being answered. How do we uh, tackle these questions? Can you make it a little bit precise, please? I think it's the questions on the, the idea of the prayers not being answered, yes. therefore of the lack yes. of belief of God because their prayers are not being answered. They're trying to pray. Why the prayers of uh, non-believers are not answered? Oh no, just so those who have left, or you know, some people who, who become uh, atheists because they say that, well, we've tried to pray to God and he has not answered our prayers. Of course, the, <clears throat> the first thing is that the religion of Islam does not tell us that the prayers of believers are uh, uh, answered only. No. Anybody who calls God Almighty uh, earnestly um, and sin with sincerity and with full uh, you know passion and when he is distressed and when he calls God Almighty uh, Allah will accept his prayer and in fact in the Holy Quran it is mentioned that sometime a man who is atheist Allah will accept his prayer and after uh, his problem is over God knows that he will again become atheist. <laughs> but still God, uh, because God has created man, he loves him. So whoever is in difficulty and he will turn to God Almighty for seeking help, he's always there to uh, help them. Uh, <clears throat> so it's not only the believers who will get the reply uh, or the support from God Almighty through the prayers. In fact, even the non-believers can do that. Now, why it happens? It happens to tell people that God loves everyone. So this is why God Almighty says that 
I want all of you to come back and uh, uh, attach yourself to me. And this is why th there are religions and we are calling people. But it is true that those people who are more righteous, those who be truly believe and act upon the teaching of God Almighty, their prayers are uh, accepted more than the non-believers. This is the difference. And that we can uh, establish. I mean, anybody can uh, come and uh, talk to us with, uh, with us and we can say, yes, you can see this, how many examples we have in our life and how many examples you have in your life about the acceptance of prayer. Exactly. And also the, the believers pray to God Almighty, uh, not only in difficulties, they, are, they pray to God even at that time they, when they have no difficulties. But the non-believers will, will uh, uh, pray only at the time when they, uh, they have no other uh, way out. This is the difference. There is one question from Aziz Tahir Saab, so I will unmute you. Yes? Yes, just one second. I'm trying to unmute. Yeah. Waalaikumsalam wa rahmatullah. I have one question. How, how we can uh, end our uh, thoughts when we are starting namaz during prayers, especially yes. when I'm starting in Fajr, uh, the Hajjad, sometimes mm. they are thinking whatever the work is left, I have to do this one, do this one, mm. starting in, a, in this namaz. You know, Hazrat Muslim has answered this question very beautifully. He said that uh, as far as the coming of thoughts in your mind is concerned, you can't stop it. This is how Allah has made our minds and our, our heart. Mm -hmm. But he says that uh, God Almighty has given you this uh, power that you can drive these uh, thoughts out if you like. So he said that your duty is, is not to stop them, which you can't do, your duty is that you should, when you have these thoughts, try to uh, drive them out and then bring your thoughts back to God Almighty and to the words of the prayer. And you see that one of the reasons why these thoughts go to here and there is that we, most of the people don't know the translation of the prayer. Mm -hmm. Even if they know the translation, they don't, don't know the explanation. You know, knowing the translation is another one thing but to deliberate on the words of the prayer and to apply it on your, on your uh, life, that's totally different. Thing. For example, you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise belongs to Allah, Lord of all the world. The question is why you are saying it? Mm -hmm. We should first of all think about it. And if you, when you will think it, I think you only Alhamdulillah, you can spend uh, <laughs> as much time as you like. But people, you know, just come and say, uh, and quickly finish it and uh, then go away. So if we want to uh, get rid of uh, the um, unnecessary thoughts, the thing is we should know the translation and also we should deliberate on the words of the, and we should apply in our life. Because, you know, <clears throat> one of the purpose of prayer is to thank Allah for his favors we should think how, what are the favors which we are having and then uh, uh, the Holy Quran, Holy Prophet says that you cannot be thankful to God unless you are thankful to people. Now the thing is that we have to think that what other people have done for us and who has done and what have they have done just if you focus on one day from the morning till evening what uh, how many people have done favors to do and then you pray for each of them and also you pray to God Almighty who has created them. Mm -hmm. And you are thankful to God. So then all your thought will remain in the prayer. But for that matter, we need to increase our knowledge about the words of prayer. Mm -hmm. And for that matter, I would say, uh, by the Sakala, we have wonderful commentaries of the promise of peace be upon him and his uh, Khalifas. I would suggest uh, in English, there's a uh, uh, five volume commentary uh, where you can find this uh, explanation of Surah Satya. Then one volume commentary is also there. And there's one uh, uh, commentary of Surah Fatiha alone, which is uh, of maybe um, maybe four or five hundred pages. And it is translated into English by Hazrat Chaudhary Mimus of Allah Khan Sahib. But anyhow, in five volume commentary, you can find a lot of things. And then, of course, in other books of the Promise Happy Spirit as well.
I think because of the time now, we don't have any more questions to permit that we can conclude the question and answer session. And, um, but, if you allow me, please, that those who want to read in, in Urdu, I would advise them to read the um, Tafsir e Kabir, first volume of Tafsir e Kabir written by Hazrat Muslim uh, there, This is there, and then also the, the commentary of Surah Fatiha uh, is also uh, available uh, in Tafsir uh, Muslim uh, Islam. So I would like to request everyone to read them. Inshallah, Tala, then you apply on your life, day-to-day -day life, and you will be, uh, you will feel that you are co coming closer to God Almighty. Okay, Jazakumullah. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, just Bye. before we end, I would just like to... Um, Apologize to all of our participants that we had to change the link um, of this session in the last moment due to some technical issues. But Jazakallah to everyone for attending. And um, also, Majlis Khalim, they would like to say Jazakallah to Naseem Bajasaf for his time today. Um, particularly, I would like to quickly just share that uh, Bajasaf's beloved sister, uh, Mubarak Odin Saiba, she passed away just two days ago. But Bajasaf still uh, attended today's session um, for our event for our benefit. So may Allah, Allah bless Baja Saab and also the deceased. Um, during, the, during the week, a message is sent on the YouTube link uh, with all the YouTube links of the previous parts. Uh, so if anyone has missed any part, then they can refer to that. And so inshallah, we will hold part number nine of this particular series uh, next Sunday. So inshallah, we'll meet everyone then. Jazakallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Thank you very much. Peace. <clears throat>